All right, welcome back to Debrick. It's now 13 minutes past 7 o'clock and it's time to take a look at uh, the situation of the coronavirus disease in the country. We know that now we have 6,190 cases. There's the, the infections uh, about uh, 4,000 uh, 228 having been recorded in the month of June and the situation keeps getting worse. We know that um, every week, the past few weeks has been getting worse because now we stand at about uh, 1,332 cases that were reported in the last one week. And this has been rising and speak, to speak to us this morning is the Chief Executive Officer of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Council, Daniel Yumbia. Good morning and thank you for joining us on Daybreak once again. Uh, good morning. Right, and let's begin. So, right, let's begin with the situation that we have now of 6,190 cases. The month of June is ending today. Already, um, more than uh, 4,200 cases reported in that month. Where are we headed? Uh, thank you. I, I think uh, what we need to understand is that the Minister of Health had predicted that we are expect we are going to experience an upsurge uh, beginning. Uh, July, uh, June, July, uh, August, we expect um, the numbers not to go down, although they have been going up and down day after day, depending on the number of tests. But what I need to say is that uh, there is uh, adequate preparation so far. I uh, must appreciate that uh, the county governments have been uh, uh, on, the, on the run, trying to put uh, structures in place to ensure that we have sufficient or enough um, isolation beds in the country. As a council, um, we have watched this evolve and we've, we've moved with it together. We started with uh, um, isolating and quarantining visitors who came into the country uh, from 23rd of March. Mm -hmm. And uh, together with the Ministry of Health, we have developed protocols that are now allowing people for home isolation. I think the key thing here is that uh, once somebody has tested positive, uh, there is a community stigma uh, that uh, these people are uh, not looked at positively and right. the community is not treating them very well. My appeal this morning mm -hmm. is that since the government has developed uh, home quarantine guidelines, uh, it, it's important that every one of us looks at them and understands what is it that uh, we can do to ensure that we have people uh, given a sp space to stay at home even if they are positive. Mm -hmm. uh, the process of uh, identifying isolation beds, the a process of identifying uh, quarantine sites. I must say that to date uh, we have identified about 407 uh, quarantine uh, facilities which have a capacity of about 157 uh, beds, which is 157, 850. These are facilities which include hotels and government institutions. Right. However, as we saw the upsurge of cases, we have now shifted uh, uh, to convert some of the uh, quarantine facilities into isolation facilities. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we, we, we identified uh, 40, uh, that seven Kenya medical training colleges. And these uh, Kenya medical training colleges will give a number, a, a given number of facilities that we can now convert into isolation. Uh, as of yesterday, I received a, a preliminary report from the Council of Governors, which indicated that so far uh, they have, I, uh, all the counties collectively have identified uh, and set up 8,539 isolation beds, as uh, this is compared to the targeted uh, 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 14,000. Right. So if you if you get each county getting us 300 beds and uh, you multiply by 47, they will be required to give us a total of about 14,000 uh, isolation beds. So if they they pull within the remaining part of the week, mm -hmm. uh, I I do hope that uh, we will be able to get a, a sufficient space that we can uh, put our people in the event that they turn uh, positive. Now, addressing that issue... Just, just before you go on, um, uh, Daniel, so there's the question about, uh, you're saying that now we have 8,539 isolation beds. 
but when the counties were instructed to come up with at least 300 beds, were they to come up with isolation beds or, or treatment beds as well? Yeah, the, 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 the isolation beds are the treatment beds for COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, quarantine uh, beds uh, can be used as, as uh, treatment beds, and they were supposed to come up with isolation beds, and they were supposed also to come up with uh, ICU beds, and so far, the report they have ind given now indicate that the, they have gotten about 374 uh, ICU beds for COVID. Mm -hmm. This is besides the other uh, facilities that we have in the country. Right. Uh, so far, they have indicated they have uh, a total of 357 uh, ventilators. Of course, this is information that is coming in to us as county, as council, and mm -hmm. we have to verify on the ground to ensure that whatever is being submitted to us is a correct thing. But I must say that there is uh, great improvement in the last one week or so mm -hmm. since the last meeting that was held uh, for um, uh, uh, for the governors. Mm -hmm. and, and it looks like uh, if we can achieve the targeted 14,000 bed isolation bed capacity, we would be good to go. Now, as the Minister of Health and the Council, we have also worked out on guidelines for home isolation. And mm -hmm. as I indicated earlier on, if uh, those patients who have mild uh, symptoms right. are allowed to go and stay at, at home, then the, there is no need to fear. However, if we allow every person who is positive to go to the, those isolation beds, mm -hmm. then we would have no space to keep the people are turning positive. Uh, uh, to date, since we started the process of home quarantine, mm -hmm. we have allowed about uh, uh, 450 uh, persons to go home. Uh, for actually, <clears throat> the number of persons who have been allowed to go for home quarantine uh, mm -hmm. who have mild symptoms are 550. Uh, this is uh, uh, the number that we got as of yesterday. So it means that uh, patients can turn positive they can be allowed to go and stay at their own <coughs> uh, environment at mm -hmm. home, mm -hmm. provided the patient is, stef is stable and uh, the patient can receive care at home. Uh, they, they, they have care caregivers who are available at their own homes, and uh, they should not be able to share uh, the social amenities, uh, the ablution blocks, the, the toilets and the bathrooms, with the other members of the family, and they must have uh, resources uh, to access food and other necessities for the persons who are uh, quarantined. And they must also have protective gears. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they must have um, gloves, and they must have um, masks uh, for the people who have uh, tested positive. If right. this is done, then uh, we, we, we are going to have uh, a big chunk of people turning positive and being allowed to go home. All right. Oh, I, I just want to we, we'll, yes. we'll get into the um, home-based care proper shortly, but let's first of all look at uh, how the weeks have been behaving, and especially to do with uh, what I was referring to a, a few minutes ago, uh, from the first 10 days until now that we know that the cases um, being reported on a weekly basis have hit 1,332. Uh, so that has been a steady rise, and of course uh, the Minister of Health officials have been telling us that uh, we have now started ascending to our peak. Nobody knows when that will be. But even <coughs> as we continue to report these numbers, Daniel Yumbia, we know that, um, yes, like now, the past one week that uh, ended on Sunday, we reported 1,332. But if you look at the, at the hospital admissions, they were not matching. And there has been that persistent question that, yes, m most of them, actually almost 90% uh, of the patients are asymptomatic, but are we able to track them down and know where they are at each and every moment so that they do not continue to transmit this, this disease in the community? I'll, I'll confirm that uh, we still have conduct tracing very active on the ground, mm -hmm. and the uh, county governments are also helping us with the provincial administration to track down the people who are positive. Uh, we, we experienced a challenge some time back where people were giving wrong telephone numbers. I must say that has stopped now. Mm -hmm. People are giving correct information. And uh, with the spread of testing at county level, because we do have about 27 testing labs which are set across the country, right. every 
county is taking responsibility over the persons that have been tested within their region. And there is conduct tracing and people are being um, subjected to assessment. Mm -hmm. And upon assessment, if the county teams find that uh, the family or the people who have tested positive have a facility at home where mm -hmm. they can be allowed to stay at home, they have the mandate to keep them at their own homes. So home quarantine is, is being practiced at, at that level. Mm -hmm. And then the county teams are also uh, testing these people periodically to assess their level of um, immunity and their re levels of recovery. So this is the reason why you are, we are trying to decongest the hospitals, and this is the reason why you are not seeing quite a number of, of patients are being taken to hospitals. And as we speak, would you know how many patients are now under home-based care, the ones that have been officially discharged to be taken care of in, uh, in their homes? As so of yesterday, we had about uh, confirmed 550. Mm -hmm. uh, that is as of yesterday, mm -hmm. the data that was being submitted to us. And uh, we keep on receiving the data uh, daily. So um, over the weekend, that's the information they gave. That was on Saturday right. or on Sunday. And then uh, this morning, I'm expecting to get an updated list of um, the number of persons who are on home quarantine from different counties. Mm -hmm. all, all, all right. And so now moving forward with all these complications and with the cases now rising, we're closing the month, uh, having recorded uh, more than 4,000 new infections and July might be worse. Do you think we're that place that you'd say that uh, you, you could safely say that we have got this disease and uh, we'll deal with it? however it behaves? I must say that, uh, yes, we, we as a country have had our own challenges. We have uh, had uh, learning lessons based on uh, uh, everybody who was positive, being taken by an ambulance, being taken to an hospital, the nearest hospital, being confined, and the family being also rounded up and then being uh, taken in uh, for observation and things like that. Now. Mm -hmm. We are systematic. We have uh, developed protocols that will allow hospitals to manage patients who are only critical, who need uh, ventilation, who need critical uh, sub, I mean, support. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those that can, can have no symptoms, we have also developed the protocol that I've been talking about, about home-based home care. And that is one way of addressing the challenge that is coming. I must say, that uh, with the uh, cold season uh, coming in, we don't expect the situation to be any better. And therefore, what I can say is that uh, as, as a country, uh, the responsibility is for every one of us that we must wear masks, we must keep social distance, mm -hmm. and we must uh, uh, be tested where possible. If you develop complications, if you have, you have those symptoms, uh, you need to go to the nearest hospital, get your, uh, get yourself checked out. If they find that uh, you have any symptoms of COVID-19, you isolate yourself. And uh, whether it's hospital or home-based uh, uh, isolation, that must be done. Of course, we also have a challenge with uh, people living in the informal settlement areas. Right. Uh, those are, have a challenge because you cannot settle them to isolate and to uh, have home quarantine because they do not have the facilities as such. And these are the people that we recommend that they should also be taken to hospitals or to isolation centers or quarantine centers for that matter, so that uh, we can ensure that they are controlled and there is not much community uh, uh, spread. Transmission. Oh, okay, oh, and uh, Daniel Yumbi, of course, you have been following the conversations in the country as uh, we prepare ourselves for a possible reopening. Uh, there are those that uh, expect that come July 6th, then there will be further relaxation of measures. But there's also the risk of what could happen and the capacity of uh, uh, the, the health sector to deal with them. But what are your thoughts when it comes to the schooling system? Yesterday we had the cabinet secretary say that uh, TVET institutions can uh, resume learning come September, but there are still challenges with the basic education. What do you think should happen, bearing in mind that some of the schools in the country are acting as isolation and quarantine facilities at different counties? Uh, one, uh, I would agree that uh, as, as a country, we need to look at what is happening globally. Mm -hmm. That COVID has hit the economies very hard. Mm -hmm. 
and as we fight COVID, we must also ensure that there is economic recovery. The government is con co uh, committed to ensure that we do not continue to suffer economic loss. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I am convicted that uh, easing some of the restrictions will be to the benefit of this country mm -hmm. and the benefit of every, every Kenyan. However, we must put structures in place to ensure that once institutions of uh, learning are opened up, uh, this opening must be in a sequential manner. Mm -hmm. We don't expect all the schools to open at a go. Right. Let us just do it the way we started. We started by quarantining every person who was suspected to have traveled, to have history of coming out of the uh, from countries uh, suspected to have had COVID. We moved ahead and uh, uh, isolated any person who turned positive. Mm -hmm. And we realized the numbers were growing. And we developed structures to ensure that we relaxed some of the regulations. Mm -hmm. I would expect the education sector to do the same. That they would first of all consider the uh, candidates who are, are waiting for exams. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at a scenario where if standard eight uh, pupils were allowed back to school, a school that has got eight classes and only one class was allowed back to school, that would be something to experiment to ensure that there is social distance, mm -hmm. there is proper sanitation, and there, there is um, uh, proper fumigation of those institutions, and therefore that is a trial. Okay. Number two, we are looking at the form fours, the candidates. Mm -hmm. Same thing. If 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 candidates in in examination classes were allowed, I think the schools would not be congested. But you asked me a question that uh, as Minister of Health and as this council, which is the National Coordination Centre for isolation and quarantine facilities. We are using some of the secondary schools and we are using some of the uh, tertiary institutions as our uh, isolation and our quarantine sites. I think that will pose its own challenge. However, as uh, we embrace the issue of home quarantine, mm -hmm. home isolation, mm -hmm. we are trying to ease out the pressure from such institutions. Mm -hmm. And now we are we are focusing on Kenya medical training colleges, which have um, a medical uh, training personnel uh, bunch with the, within the institution. These are institutions, even if they are to be opened, and they, they had patients to care from one side or one wing. Right. They, they are medical related. They would act like uh, small hospitals with uh, for people with the uh, uh, mild uh, complications and they would be able to protect themselves, and that would not harm the population. And therefore, it's a process that needs to be looked into, mm -hmm. and it's a process that every one of us needs to play their part effectively. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Daniel Yumbi, of course, for speaking to us this morning. In as far as the road to reopening, so many questions that Kenyans are still asking. Yes, there's that desire that you need to reopen and salvage the economy, but there's also the reality of the infections that keep rising. And uh, we keep hearing from the Ministry of Health that the, be the benefit or the advantage that we have is that most of these cases are symptomatic. Thank you so much for speaking to us from Nairobi.